At the core of the exhibition is how artists respond in times of unprecedented crisis, in times of uncertainty. And we live in such times now. The nine artists that are gathered together in the exhibition A Year Without the Southern Sun make different propositions. They require both from us as a viewer and them in the process of making the work our full engagement. There are several commitments from the artists, whether self-reflection through their own autobiography or mining archival materials or documenting power to large-scale architectural interventions. And in one case, which is really central, uh, an ephemeral work of land art. The confrontation of all of these works is about man and nature, and they point as much to the past as they do to our possible futures. I'm Justin Palera, and I was the founder, uh, one of the founders of PS120 Nonprofit Art Space that was here in Potsdam Strasse, and the kind of artists that we were interested in. So one of those artists uh, was Nadia Kabalenka, and I said, we have to start an exhibition by going to the studio. Some of the questions uh, in that work were about ecofeminism and questions of the homo fabra, the man who can control nature, the man who is using technology to change his world, but is constantly facing crises. The first line when we were kind of writing the exhibition text that the future of humanity is in question. And how do artists like respond to this continual crisis that we face? From that visit with Nadia, we thought of uh, Matteo Kliebe Abenak, and we went to his studio. So these two things kind of converged at that moment. We had the questions around ecofeminism and climate crisis coming from, from Nadia, and, this, and then the questions around the history of postcolonialism. So one thing that's important uh, when you're organizing a group show of so many artists is the question of not only which artists are going next to each other in a room, but what artworks. And uh, for that, we spent a lot of time with 3D diagrams, with placing the artwork on the wall, taking it down. An artist that sort of like pulled all these concepts together historically. That's always been something important to me, to know that art history continues. In uh, 1982, Agnes did this, this action, this performance, this sculpture, this installation, this Gesamtkunst work of planting two acres of wheat in downtown Manhattan. That made us think of even older artwork, like uh, Gordon Monta Clark, who had done these kind of uh, interventions into social spaces. So we're showing uh, Gordon, one of Gordon's most famous works called Day's End, and that's upstairs uh, juxtaposed with, with Kevin, Kevin Blinderman. And Kevin had created these kind of, uh, almost in a Duchampian way, like these uh, altered ready-mades, where we produced an arm that attaches an outdoor heater made for, for umbrellas to face down, to face directly in the viewer's face. So it was literally this confrontation between the beautiful and the dangerous. A very dramatic uh, illustration and rendition of man versus nature is in Yalda Afsha's video, Vidurla, in which you see young adolescent girls standing as if they're spectators, sometimes clutching a fence or uh, a young boy playing with toys in the river. And they're watching these rowdy teenage and adolescent boys. And it's unclear what they're doing, if they're proving their kind of foolishness or courage. And what is happening in the video is actually a bullfight in the river, but the animal is never seen. And then in the center of the room is a work called Salt and Sand by Nadia Kabalinka. And in juxtaposition between either the wheat field taking over New York City or the jungle taking over the cemetery, you have a scale. And when Nadia came in, she perfectly balanced the sand and the salt. But over the course of the exhibition, the salt has absorbed the moisture from the air and become heavier. So now the scale is no longer balanced. Now, in a way, the salt is winning. And with the salt, you enter the dialogue of the ocean. Uh, which is a huge part of this question around the Anthropocene, because you have the relationship between the ocean filled with salt eating away at the land, which is also metaphorically represented by the sand. You also have a, an, uh, in the exhibition Raphael Domenech. Raphael thinks of all of his work in terms of art bookmaking and artist books and publication. Each room of the exhibition takes on its own character. And in the final room of the exhibition, four artists come together to create a kind of mise-en-scene, uh, an installation that's much more than just the parts. We had invited Neda Saidi, who was born in Tehran, to do a room-sized installation from a body of work that she had been, an ongoing body of work that she'd been working on called Parasitoid Cell of Desirable Future. 
and we wanted her to reinstall this work and she chose to create acrylic, uh, clear acrylic tables upon which these snow globes would sit and they're inside each snow globe 3D printed renderings of characters and uh, vegetation from video games. All of these video games had to do with uh, gardening and this was part of Neda's long-term investigation of gardening to dissect the notions of its colonial and imperial past. And in particular, the garden's impulse to collect, rename, reallocate, and even fence off. So outside of that garden, we had invited the American artist Trevor Paglin to exhibit two works that acted like windows on either side of the garden. Uh, these were from his series, his ongoing series of drone photographs. So during uh, the course of producing the work, the U.S. military had a drone attack in Tehran uh, in which they killed a major general um, and was international news. It was one of those moments where you're putting together an exhibition and you realize that some of what you're talking about, some of what the art is addressing, is much bigger than the art world context alone. As the windows of Trevor Paglin's skyscapes are on either side of the garden, you can see but only if you look very carefully, these tiny specks of drones in both the photos. One photo, a predator drone, uh, and one photo, a reaper drone in these, open, uh, in these open windows. Above the garden is the work of Raphael Domenech, and he had taken a poem, a concrete poem they had written, and placed those words on all of the lights above. So it was a magical moment in the exhibition where you had the windows to either side looking out into the world, the garden in the middle, and when you looked up, you saw a poem in the sky.